Yesterday, Al Jazeera reporter Shireen Abu Akla was fatally shot by Israeli forces in the occupied West Bank during an Israeli raid. Shireen was a respected journalist in the Middle East and became a household name during her more than two decades of reporting in Palestinian territories. Hundreds of Palestinians carried her body in Ramallah, enchanted with our soul, with our blood, we sacrifice for you martyr, which in Arabic sound very similar to her name, similar to her name, Shireen. Unfortunately, the U.S. is handling the situation much differently than it did when U.S. filmmaker Brent Renaud died in Ukraine. When Renaud was killed in Ukraine, the State Department blasted it as a gruesome example of the Kremlin's indiscriminate actions. But in regards to Shireen's killing, State Department spokesperson Ned Price said this, quote, We are heartbroken and condemn the killing of American journalist Shireen Abu Akhla in the West Bank. The investigation must be immediate and those responsible must be held accountable. Even the New York Times refused to blame Israel and said only that the trailblazing journalist died at 51, foregoing that she was shot in the head by Israeli snipers. Jesus, host of the Katie Halper Show. Katie Halper joins us to make sense of this strategy. Welcome, Katie. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for uh, talking to us about this. Uh, so is the was the media coverage uh, as hypocritical and biased as I just indicated there? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is kind of part of a larger pattern that we see whenever the United States or the Western media is dealing with violence uh, committed by Israel. There's a whitewashing, there's a downplaying, it's a cycle. Um, and we see it all here. Uh, it also starts with the fact that Israel targets the kind of notoriously targets uh, members of the press. And it should be said that Shireen Abu Akhle and the other journalists, another journalist was shot in the back. She was shot fatally. They both had uh, were wearing press helmets and press vests. So it was very clear there was no doubt that these were members of the press. But Israel kind of notoriously targets members of the press. Uh, they shot and killed two during the March of Return, two journalists who were covering the March of Return, two members of the press. They maimed two other ones. Just last year, they bombed a building that housed uh, Al Jazeera and the AP. And what's really important in this story is that uh, the Israeli government basically immediately lied. They said that she had been shot by uh, Palestinians, and they even released a video just showing someone shooting. Uh, it was so uh, debunkable. The Israeli human rights organization, B'Tselem, uh, debunked it. They went to the spot that uh, the alleyway that was presented in these videos released by the Israeli government and saw that there was no way in the world that that was where the shots that killed Shireen came from. So then the Israeli government kind of walked it back. But the fact that they would so blatantly provide video that had nothing to do with the shooting uh, reveals just exactly how dishonest they are and how they're so used to getting away with things because there's such a culture of impunity, both within Israel and, of course, the United States uh, refuses to ever condition aid on any respective human rights. And from the, the headlines, as you said, there you know what's missing in the headlines is that the Israeli forces are the people uh, who shot Shireen. Uh, and when uh, Ali Abu Nima from Electronic Intifada rightly compared and contrasted the State Department's response to this shooting, which was tragic, to the State response, State Department's response to the tragic shooting of um, Brent Renault, and there was not a lot known, and they immediately, with Brent Renault's uh, shooting and killing, they immediately uh, attributed it to, to Russia, to the Russian government. Uh, before they investigated at all. In this case, they're calling for an investigation, even though there's footage of it, which we didn't have in the case of Brent Renault. So we, we actually have uh, footage of the shooting and its aftermath from Al Jazeera. This is fairly horrifying, so fair warning for those of you watching at home. If you do not want to watch this, just jump ahead 30 seconds.
something else I want to point out is that she was wearing a helmet and she was, um, they managed to shoot her precisely in the head where she wasn't covered. I believe it went through the neck. So this requires major precision shooting. Um, and the IDF frequently brags about how precise they're able to be and how trained their snipers are. So the fact that they did this to a member of the press is just, it, I was going to say shocking, but sadly it isn't shocking. It's typical, but it's something that's worth bearing in mind that this was not an accidental shooting of a member, of a well-identified press member. So I'm, I'm seeing, so the Times of Israel claims that uh, they offered to, the Israeli government offered a joint investigation that the Palestinian Authority has declined uh, to participate in. What do you think about that? Well, it's not surprising. I mean, Beth Selim, the uh, Israeli human rights organization I mentioned before, refuses to cooperate with the Israeli government in these investigations because they engage in such whitewashes. So it doesn't surprise me that they wouldn't want to lend legitimacy to these investigations, which do result in very sanitized versions of reality. Katie, you do such a good job of tracking the media coverage of these kinds of moments. Has there been any shift in how the, you know, the killing is described uh, now that we have the, the footage and there's been so much pushback from many progressives online about the passive voice that's been used in describing um, you know, uh, Shireen's death that completely erases um, the, the actor from the sentences and all of these headlines. Well, I'd have to go back and check, but there haven't been many updates. I know that at least um, when uh, Sana Saeed tracked some of these headlines, uh, and these were recorded after, uh, you know, at least three eyewitnesses uh, had test, you know, t their testimony had been collected. And you have at, Al uh, at BBC, it's Al Jazeera reporter killed during Israeli raid in West Bank. The AP writes Al Jazeera reporter killed during Israeli raid in West Bank. Fox News says Al Jazeera reporter dies following disputed incident in the West Bank. Um, so there's really no skepticism of the way that the Israeli government reported on this. And just imagine if, if Russia had released a statement saying that they were not involved in the shooting of Brent Renault, uh, how that would be accepted and reported on by the Western media. I have a feeling it would not be... Uh, reported on in the same way. So the, the Palestinian Authority has declined to participate in this investigation, uh, perhaps because they don't want to lend it credibility. What other mechanisms are there to achieve accountability here? Well, the United States, of course, could do something, but they won't. Um, I mean, what's interesting, and, and the reason probably there will be slightly more accountability than there would otherwise be, uh, is that she was an American citizen. I'm sure if she were just a Palestinian citizen, um, this wouldn't have received as much attention and there wouldn't be this scrutiny to the degree that there is, uh, that, that Israel is undergoing now. Um, I also wanted to just read something that she had said, Shireen Abu Akleh had been, uh, like shortly before her death, she was in an Al Jazeera video reflecting on her career. And one of the things she said was, I will never forget the volume of destruction, nor will I forget that death was sometimes very close to us. Uh, and then she also said, it may not be able to change the reality, but at least I was able to convey the people's message and voice, which is, you know, very tragic and moving in light of the fact that the death that was sometimes very close to them mm -hmm. actually arrived for her. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, her saying that at least she was able to convey the people's message and voice. The the hope is that, you know, the tragedy um, of her killing, uh, of her murder, really, let's call it what it is, of her murder, even that conveys the people's message and voice in a way. Yeah. yeah. Well, Katie, thank you so much for joining us to talk about this. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. And we'll have more rising right after this.